Hello and welcome back to my mm, YouTube channel. In case you're new here, my name is Divan Sugueno and this is Divan's Empire. Look at the time right now, it's 5.19. 5.19. I've been working the whole night, all through the night. Um, I, I'm sleepy, but I don't want to sleep. Well, I want to sleep, but I cannot sleep because I have a... A busy day today and I knew I also had some works to do that if I never finished and then the things I'm supposed to do on this particular day would make me not do them so I had to transnight it man I'm so tired I'm so weak I don't know I've been taking coffee like nobody's business but now I'm really really hungry you know I ate supper quite early and uh, now I'm feeling so, so hungry. Let me uh, make myself something to eat before I continue editing my um, videos and stuff. This is work, man. Work. You know, Nairobi, you have to really, really hustle. You have to work extra hard to put food on the table. So let me see you once I've made something for myself. By the way guys, I love using this bread, uh, it's called Broadway's. I love it because of its natural taste, it tastes so old. So I'm gonna give you tea as I take my tea, as I also work just to keep me awake. Yeah. So but it is not like this every day. I don't eat this every day. This is just for the camera. Guys, from right where you're watching us from, how has this pandemic corona affected you? Has it really affected you like it has affected me and most of uh, the people I know. Let me tell you something, guys. Right now in Kenya, it is uh, about seven months since Corona got into this country. And uh, many things have changed since it COVID was uh, declared a health hazard in our country, Kenya, here. I remember very well when it first came in. Hey... And then they just announced in the TV stations and radio stations that, oh, Corona is in Kenya. I'm telling you guys, at that particular time, we were sure that Corona was not going to kill e any of, of, of uh, us because we were Africans. You remember there was a rumor going around that, you know, this is a disease that only survives in cold environments. And uh, as we all know, Africa is so hot. The climate in Africa is not the same as the climate in the Western countries, where they only see the sun for a few hours. Here in Africa, we see the sun for more than 12 hours. We are really blessed. So we knew this virus would not survive in our country, Kenya, and also East Africa, Uganda, uh, 
just let me say Africa as an whole. But to my shock, it was not that way because after a short while when it got into Kenya, uh, the country came to a standstill. The president announced a lockdown in some of the counties in Kenya. Kenya is made up of counties. So Nairobi, the capital city, was under lockdown. Mombasa, as well as... Uh, I'm forgetting the third county that was also in lockdown. So there was nobody who was allowed to move in or out of this particular counties for about three months. It was tough. That is when uh, business people had to fire their, some of their members. Many people were laid out. People lost their jobs. And, uh, you know, after losing their jobs, life had to continue. Because those who are paying rents, most of them could not continue paying their, their rents because they never had jobs. You see, most people who this thing affected were artists and uh, people in the hotel industry, hospitality. Because hotels were closed, public gatherings were closed, markets were closed, people could not sell clothes, you know. People could not sell in markets. Going to markets was uh, almost like an offense. So many things really, really affected our country and uh, things became so tough. Then a friend of mine, I just remembered, a friend of mine, one of my friends, one of my best friends, some, a friend who I knew, who I met in church many years ago. So came to me and uh, he told me he needed some help because uh, they were having some fights and quarrels with the uh, girlfriend who he used to stay with. Now, do you know, lockdown, when Corona hit Kenya, the government ordered people to stay home. There was something called curfew. And this night curfew would always start from 7 p.m., meaning 7 p.m. should never find you outside unless you want to be a guest in a police station. So by 7 p.m., everybody would be in their houses. Men and women, children, all locked in their houses. And this is not an habit that people are used to. Because in reality, here in Africa, most men usually go back home when everything is already done. Their wives have already cooked, their children maybe have slept. That is when they come back home because nobody wants to stay home to, you know, to, to, to go through so many stresses about, oh, you, you go home early and then your wife starts telling you that, oh, the children don't have food, oh, I don't have clothes, oh, I don't have what, I don't have what. So most men want peace and because of that peace, they used to go home uh, very late. But now because of Corona, they had to go home early. So domestic violence was in the rise. Many relationships were terminated because of COVID. You could not sit each and every day. You have no job. You have to stay with your family there. You have nothing to eat. You have to look at each other every day. Children making noise, running right and left. It was a tough time for people. So this friend of mine came to me and told me, you know what, Devans, I need you to host me in your place for some time because this corona thing has not been fair on my side for the past three months. I've not been able to make money and I've been having problems uh, paying rent. And since my girlfriend is the one who has a job she has a job yes and uh, she's been feeding us for the three months she has decided that enough is enough and she cannot continue uh, doing so especially when i am the man and i'm seated back at home so i clearly understood him and i told him you know uh, as you're speaking right now i'm also hosting another friend in my place who also had some difficulties so it was a tough time you know it was tough for me and it was also tough for my friends who are not employed. But in this world, we learn to share the little that we have. So I was hosting a friend before the, this other friend of mine came. So when he came, we decided, okay, why don't we just allow him stay for maybe two days uh, to, to make up things with the, uh, with the girlfriend? Because we all understand what relationship issues are all about. After a short while, <laughs> guys... On that day that my friend came, uh, he spent uh, some few hours at my place. And uh, guess what? As I left this friend of mine in the house, I was outside sitting in the balcony together with the guy who I was hosting at that particular time before this other one came in. And uh, I don't know what just told me to go in the house. And when I got into the house, I found this friend of mine 
who had a disagreement with the wife, he was bleeding and lying on my bed. So I was like, hey, bro, what's up? Checking cl closely, I noticed that the guy had cut himself with some razor blade here on his hand. You know, like when you watch these American movies, most of them, if they want to commit suicide or if they want to kill themselves, they usually cut themselves this place. There is, I don't know, this, I don't, there are veins or arteries in this place that when you cut them, blood uh, comes out quite quick and you might die within a short moment. So this guy... It's like he was trying to commit suicide. It was at this moment that I got so, so scared. I didn't know what to do. I screamed. And in fact, at that particular time, uh, I even called my pastor. I called my church pastor and told him that, you know, uh, this guy uh, is trying to commit suicide and I do not know what to do. That particular time, most hospitals are closed. Accessing medical services was quite difficult because of COVID. Doctors were afraid. People were scared, you know. Nobody wanted to treat you. Many cases of people dying on the streets were reported because doctors were afraid. They were, they were scared of treating people. So I called my pastor. And after calling my pastor, he stays far from where I stay. He decided to come. And immediately, the, the guy I used to stay with before got scared. And he went to the police station to go and report the matter. Because the, uh, the caretaker... A caretaker is somebody who takes care of a, a building or a place where people stay in a residential area. So the, our caretaker told us, because we had to inform even the caretaker that somebody was trying to commit suicide in my place. So the caretaker told us that if this person dies, then this will, will be a big case. It will be treated as homicide. And... Um, Personally, I didn't want any issues because I already had enough issues. Can you imagine Corona is here? We are struggling to put food on the, on the table. We are struggling to pay rent. And then somebody else comes from elsewhere. You offer to help them with the little that you have. Not that you are helping because you have much. But you have little but you want to share it because you cannot say no. Then this person that you've welcomed in decides to cause another you know, damage. He tries to commit suicide and then you have nothing else to do. Guys, that was the most traumatizing period for me during this COVID-19. And when the pastor came, the pastor came the, with an ambulance. This ambulance came with people of corona, this COVID people who will take people forceful quarantine. The police came, the caretaker was there and many people came. So my house was full of people. The pastor decided, let him first talk to this uh, boy. And then after talking to him, then he will hand him over to the police. So the police gave an instruction that once they finish talking and they are sick, uh, medication let him walk to the police station to go and, you know, avail himself for further questioning. So later I just came to realize that this guy was going through a lot. He was going through a difficult time. And let me tell you, he was not the only one. Relationships sometimes can be so troublesome. Do not rush into a relationship if you are not ready to face the uh, challenges or things that it comes with. Because once you get into a relationship, to a man that would mean that you have another person to take care of. Whatever you are used to doing when you are self, it will double. If you are used to eating one plate of food, now because you are in a relationship, you will have to eat double. If you are used to spending things in your house that will take you for a whole month, in a relationship, they will take you halfway because you are two. And uh, within time, you realize your wife will get pregnant. And after getting pregnant, you might decide to have a child. And after having a child, the budget increases even more. Therefore, if you are not prepared to face the responsibility that comes to the relationships, guys, I'm begging you in the name of the Lord, do not make a mistake of getting into a serious relationship that will lead into marriage. Because it can be so difficult until the only option you have left is like the one that my friend have of committing suicide. What if my friend died? It would have been a very, very bad thing for me. I don't know. I would have ended up in prison because answering police questions because of suicide and murder and death, it's not easy. So I learned my lessons and I'm still repeating the same lesson to you today. If you're not ready for a relationship, please do not rush. 
that thing is there. If it is sex, you'll get it at the right time. If it is children you want, you'll get it. But only fall in a relationship if you are ready to take care of your wife and probably the, 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 the things that it comes with. The relationship, once you fall in love, you will have children. And then your girlfriend will have a family. You will have to take care of their parents too, the mother, because you are now you become a son-in-law. Man, it's expensive. When you remember that you have to put food on the table, you have to dress her, you have to take care of your children, you have to pay f uh, electricity, you have to pay for water bills, and even medication. Do not rush. Until next time, guys, this is the Vans Empire. End of discussion. Kwa jili yako.